artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. AI. 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 Artificial intelligence is one of the most powerful tools at our disposal because it helps us do one thing. That is to problem solve. It doesn't matter if your goal is something as simple as making a sandwich all the way to building a multi-million dollar business, AI can help you problem solve your way towards achieving your goals. However, the only way you're going to be able to get AI to actually help you achieve those goals is by asking it the right questions. That's why in today's video, I'll be sharing four simple frameworks to help you ask better questions so you can get the right answers when you're using AI. Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Christian. I'm a certified occupational therapist and I help people live independent and fulfilling lives. On this channel, we discuss real life lessons that can help you level up in the game of life. One of my favorite videos on the internet is this dad who's making PB and J sandwiches with his kids. The catch is that the only way the kids can help him make the sandwich is by writing down specific instructions that the dad has to follow to a T. Now you would think this is a relatively simple task, but what actually happened instead is where that the kids had such a difficult time getting their dad to make the perfect PB and J sandwiches because their dad was following their instructions exactly as it stated. So this resulted in some really hilarious situations like the dad not putting enough peanut butter or putting it on the wrong side and even at one point I think the bottle of jelly was in between the sandwiches and this drove the kids absolutely crazy. It was really, really funny to watch but my point is that sometimes when you're writing down specific instructions it's not clear enough to the receiving party on what exactly you need to get done. The reason I told you this story is because it's very very similar to how we communicate with artificial intelligence because the only way that AI can actually understand this is through our writing. So if our writing isn't specific enough, isn't clear enough then obviously we're not going to get the answers that we seek. Now let's start off with the first framework which is to always clarify your goals. Now as someone who works in the medical field in the rehab department, I cannot stress how important having goals are because goals give us clarity on what exactly are we trying to solve. What exactly is the objective especially when there are multiple parties involved. So when you're interacting with the artificial intelligence, you almost want to assume that the artificial intelligence, the AI, does not know anything about the problem you're trying to solve. So the more specific, the more clarity you can give towards what exactly is the problem, what exactly is the question, the better the AI is going to help you solve those problems. Just to kind of give you guys some example, a vague non-clarity-ish goal is going to be something like help me make a sandwich. Just like, you know, the video that I was discussing earlier. And if we type this out, now the AI doesn't really know what kind of sandwich you're referring to. So it's going to come up with some suggestions. You know, it's like, it's already asking here like, sure, I can guide you, but you need to select a sandwich first. So the AI is already helping prompt you on what you really need. So something that's a little bit more, you know, specific is something like help me make a sandwich which is high in protein and one that I can make in five minutes. So you're kind of specifying, you know, what exactly is you need. Now it's a little more specific, right? Is is giving a chicken avocado sandwich. That sounds amazing right here. But giving more clarity to your goal and whatever it is that you're trying to ask, you know, of course I'm just giving sandwiches as a simple, you know, example right here. But the more specific, you know, the more clarity you give towards that goal, then the AI is like, oh, that's what you're trying to achieve. Then these are the steps that you can actually do. Always remember the first framework, no matter what you're doing, is to provide clarity to the goal that you're trying to achieve. Framework number two is to outline the response. Now, a really useful tip I have for you when you're using AI is to make sure you specify how exactly do you want the AI to respond to you. Now, my personal preference is to ask the AI to actually organize things into bullet points for me because I just like seeing things a little more broken down so I don't, don't get overwhelmed with it. But if you're someone who wants a little bit more, you can ask, like, can I get 10 steps? You know, can I get 15 steps? Whatever it is, you can specify how you want the response to be like. Taking our example again for the sandwich over here. So say I have 10 steps right here, right? And maybe it's a little too overwhelming and I want to simplify it. Like, can you simplify this into five steps instead? So it's just giving you, you know, different ways to organize the information that you're collecting, something that works for you. And maybe you don't want five steps. Maybe you're a weirdo who really just likes reading paragraphs of stuff, right? So right, can you instead give me a nice detailed description in a paragraph format? I don't know why you do this, but I'm just giving you the options. And now instead, it's going to write a whole paragraph for you on the exact same information, only it's formatted differently. And it's so powerful right here because you saw how fast everything was generated, you know, and it's just me kind of trying to come up with ideas and see the steps to my liking. So depending on how your brain functions, you might ask it to actually organize it a little differently from you. So it's so, so powerful because a lot of information in the world is very unorganized, it's very jumbled up. And our human brains, at least to my knowledge, is that we often see 
see things a little bit better and understand things a little bit better when they're broken down into simple points, like in a bullet point format or list. So try this out. Framework number two is to make sure that you outline your responses. Oh, and by the way, if you enjoyed this content up to this point, make sure you smash the like button and better yet, leave a comment down below if you have any kind of questions. You know, I'm just sharing this information because I personally use it on a day-to-day basis to advance things in my life, my career, you know, my health. And I think this information can be really helpful for a lot of people if you're looking to level up in the game of life. Now, framework number three is to provide context. Now, this one's a really fun one because ChatGPT, yes, it's an artificial intelligence, but the cool thing is that it has information of the entire internet. So it can basically assume the identity of anyone you want it to assume. So imagine you had all the expertise in the world at your fingertips and you can ask it any questions you want. So say it's making you this chicken avocado sandwich, right? But I want it to be a little fancier so I can just go ahead and ask like, imagine if you are a three-star Michelin chef. Did I spell that right? Yeah. <laughs> Chat GPT will get it. But imagine if you're a three-star Michelin chef, how would you change this sandwich? Oh, and by the way, I am also vegetarian, so I cannot eat chicken. So it's just a little more context right here. And you know, I was just kind of brain vomiting there. But essentially, once you start giving more context, you're going to get a whole different sort of response, whole different answers. And depending on who you make ChatGPT become, like maybe you are a nutritionist instead, you know, someone who's more focused on health. Maybe you are, you know, like you said, the chef right here. So they're going to be a lot more focused on flavor, on taste, depending on how you actually give your context. What's the background? Like you want to imagine that ChatGPT or the AI is basically a friend who has no idea of what exactly that you're doing and they're just barely coming into the room and you have to explain things in detail, give them the context, give them the background. So that way they're able to actually perform and solve that problem without getting too confused. To give themselves the best work, they first have to understand what exactly is the context behind this problem, behind the goal that you're trying to achieve. So check out these responses really. It's giving us, you know, different ingredients we can use. It's giving, you know, like special spreads we can use like aged balsamic vinegar, edible flowers. Oh, that's really fancy. I don't know about that on a sandwich. You can kind of see just by giving it different context you're going to get different answers from that. So depending on what kind of questions that you have for it, if you're not getting the answers that you really, really seek, maybe you need to give it a little more context. Of course, you don't want to overwhelm it. Make sure that it understands the basic information. Make sure it understands where you're coming from. Try to describe it again as to the best of your ability, like you're talking to a best friend. And then maybe that way is going to give you better responses, you know, for the questions that you're seeking. And lastly, framework number four is to evaluate the answers. Now, keep in mind again that AI is still a tool. You shouldn't depend on it entirely. Whatever answers that it's giving you, it's basically more of a brainstorming session, an organization session. But you don't have to take that information and apply it right away. You can start asking questions, modifying the answers answers that it's giving you. Like say you have all these different ingredients right here, right? And you're not really a fan of tempeh. Say, I don't like tempeh. You know, you're evaluating the answers and you're giving your own input. What other options are there? And then just by you giving that little feedback to it, and this is the cool thing about ChatGPT, right? It's basically a conversation. Anything that you're writing and giving it, it's really storing that information. It's like, okay, this person, you know, he's, I'm a chef right now. I'm trying to give them, you know, specific examples, how to make a sandwich, they are vegetarian. So it knows all this information. And the more that you chat with it, the more information that you gives it, it's gonna understand it more and more. Don't be afraid to ask it questions if it's not giving you the specific answers that you seek. What I find a lot of people do is that they'll interact with ChatGPT a few times and they'll think that, you know, it's kind of like just a little fun thing to do, you know, and it's sometimes they give a right response, sometimes they give it wrong and they kind of give up on it, but they just haven't really asked specific enough responses and really interacted with it enough based on the responses it gives. It's like a conversation, right? When you're talking with someone, it's a back and forth. You ask something, they answer something, you don't understand something, you ask for clarity, same goes there. And the more that you do it, the more clarity you gain until you can actually solve that problem. So really apply this mindset where you actually evaluate the answers and not simply take everything and just copy and paste it and just assume that is exactly what you're going to do step by step. Think for yourself, what exactly do you want to accomplish? What doesn't sit right with you? What doesn't sound right? Because again, AI, there are still some flaws. It's, you know, picking information everywhere from the internet. And sometimes that information isn't correct. So you need to kind of curate everything, look through the stuff and see what exactly do you need to modify. Ask it, you know, hey, I don't really like this part. Or hey, I really enjoy this part. Can you expand on it? And the more that you do this, the more used to using it. And you know, the more problems you can actually start to see and solve. So that's about it for the video. Thank you so much 
much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content and you actually gained something from it. And if you did, go ahead, smash the like button. I cannot tell you how much it helps this channel grow. And if you want more content like this, go ahead and check out this video over here on the three ways that you can leverage AI to your advantage. It's more specific for medical professionals. I myself am a medical professional, but really anyone can benefit from it. That's about it. Thank you very much. And I'll see you guys again very soon. Peace.